السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الملك إن الحمد لله نحمد تعالى ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والعهم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن الأسدك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة وأهلها في النار أيها المسلمون My brothers and sisters in Islam I'lam rahimakumullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us all and forgive us all of our sins. And as this great month of Ramadan is coming closer, ever steadily so closer, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to live to see Ramadan and to complete Ramadan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Because many of us may not make it to that time, nor may finish that time. So we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
One of the first things I want to mention, which is no mystery to any of us, that we're all aware. We're all aware about Tawheed and about the importance of Ibadah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed us here in this dunya for a very important purpose. For a very important hadith. For a very important goal. And that goal is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنُّ وَالْإِنسِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Letting us know what? That we have a purpose. The believer has a purpose. Everyone in this room has a hadif, has a goal, has a purpose in this dunya. Some people, they spend their time and their wealth in the stock market and other things engaging in the dunya. But they don't have a purpose. When they lose that aspect of the dunya, they kill themselves. Or they go to drug use. Or they go to other forms of muharramat that have no benefit in this life or the hereafter. But the believer has a hadith. And along with that Tawheed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because it's not sufficient just to know that Allah is one, and that He's the only one worthy of worship, and that He has divine names and attributes. That's not sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Worship Allah alone. And do not associate any partners with him. In this ayah, there are many fawaid that the ulama bring for us. One of the important things we have to look at in many of the verses in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he orders us something, a lot of times you'll see in, in the very same ayat, you'll see nafi wa ithbat. You'll see an affirmation of tawheed. An affirmation that Allah is one and He's the only one worthy of worship. And you'll see a negation of shirk. In that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ He says, and worship Allah. That's a command and that's an affirmation. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئٍ And do not associate partners with Him. That's a negation of shirk. But this is no mystery to us. But it's just a humble reminder. Another benefit we gain from this ayat, which is a qa'idah that we can take with us throughout our religion when we read the Qur'an and we read the authentic sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something, or whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands something, al-amr yufid al-wujub, that it, when there's a commandment from Allah, it's evidence that it is an obligation. Whenever Allah says something for you to do, Allah, He commanded us to do what? To worship Him. That means worship is an obligation. Unless, of course, there is evidence in the Qur'an or the Sunnah to take it from that obligation to something that is mustahab, something that is recommended, or something other than that. But it has to have evidence. We're all required to bring evidence for what we believe. And as... It is no mystery for us, as we mentioned Tawheed, we have to quickly go over the Tawheed. To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, His Lordship, that He created all of us, that He created mankind, as we, show, we uh, mentioned in the previous ayah. And then we also have to know that what that necessitates is that we worship Allah alone, and that's Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and that you must direct all of your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it be salat, whether it be zakat, whether it be fasting, whether it be hajj or umrah, or whether it be tawakkul, those types of ibadah that are inside of our hearts. All of those things have to be directed to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who allowed you to come to this khutbah. He's the one who allowed you to wake up and have another chance to make tawbah to Him and worship Him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Al-ibadatu ism jami' li kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'al wa aqwal al-zahir wal-batan. 
Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Ibadah, he defined for us what worship is. This is a, a, a general definition. That Ibadah, worship, is, is a, a, a general term. And it encompasses everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions which are open and hidden. Those actions inside. So open types of ibadah, things like, of course, the salat. The salat entails actually both. When we pray, it's outward. When we supplicate to Allah, it's outward. When we make hajj, it's outward. But there's many types of ibadah that are inside. Tawakkul, to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. What tawassal, to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can read, no one can, can see that from your outside limbs. They can only take a, to guesstimate or estimate. But they don't really know what's in your heart. To Allah, to make trust, to tr- trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's inside. That's the ibadah uh, batan. That's inside of your heart. So now that we know that ibadah can be both, it can be on the tongue, it can be on the limbs, and it can be within the heart, as iman is comprised of all of those things. That's a part of our iman. That's iman to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlul Sunnah believes that iman fluctuates. It goes up and it goes down. Sometimes we're strong in iman, sometimes we're weak. And iman can be a statement, it can be something on your tongue when you take the shahada. La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That you bear the testimony of faith on your tongue. And iman can be in the heart, as we mentioned, having tawakkul. And iman is on your limbs. It can be something as simple as moving a harm away from the road or anything that's outward. This is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. And from the types of ibadah that we're concerned with today is fasting. And as the month is approaching, Ever so closer, we have to reflect on the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam, kama kutiba alladina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu alladina amanu, kutiba alaykum siyam. O oh, you who believe, we have pres- uh, it has been prescribed for you fasting. Similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ In order that you would become God conscious, meaning you would fear Allah. That means that you would inherit taqwa from exercising that ibadah, that great ibadah of fasting. So then it calls into mind, what is taqwa? What do we mean by taqwa? Everyone says taqwa, but we have to have some idea what it means. Taqwa, it means to stay away from the muharramat, to stay away from those things Allah has prohibited. And to do those things which Allah has commanded. So what Allah has commanded us with, we should strive to do. What He has prohibited us, we should stay away from. And that goes with also the following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And as with all forms of ibadah, and fasting is not excluded from this, that... It has to fall, it has to be, it is built on two pillars. Ibadah or worship is built on two pillars. The first one is ikhlas lillah. That you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make your intention that when you fast, and of course the fasting, your intention, you make that before, uh, before fajr. And the ulama, some of them, they say that you need to make it every day. Every day during Ramadan, before Fajr, make your intention. You don't have to say it on your tongue. Because as the ulama state, that mahala niya fi qalb. That the place of the intention is in the heart. So you don't have to say it on your tongue. Or any other forms of, of, uh, of uttering it. So the first pillar that all of our worship must be built upon is ikhlas lillah. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when... We begin to fast, do it for the sake of Allah, that you're doing this as an act of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal. And the second pillar 
which I think is known to all of us as well, is that it is built upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That whatever we do when we fast, it's not that we can just take a dietary fast or a yoga fast, but it's based upon our intention. And then on top of that, it's not sufficient that we just have intention, I'm going, I'm going to do this yoga fast for Allah. No. But in fact, it has to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he fasted from the, uh, b- the rising of the sun till the to Maghrib. That that, it has to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our fasting has to be in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And again, with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And in addition to that, I want to mention a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which affirms for us the importance that we have to make that intention every day of Ramadan that we should make the intention before Fajr, before fasting, before Fajr comes in, we make the intention. That you're going to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Man lam you beat som, a som, qabla fajr, fala siyam lahu. That whoever does not make intention to fast before fajr, then there is no fasting for him. So it's very important that we have that intention. The niyyah, the intention for all of our ibadah. In som, it's ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا أَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَادِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرِيَ الْمَنَاوَى The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone will get that for which he intended. That means your intention counts. If you, the intention, it makes, it distinguishes between habits and ibadah. For example, if you fast, because you want to lose weight or you want to do detox you know you want to purify yourself your stomach and and all those things your kidney and your colon colon cleanser if you fast for the sake of that then that's your reward your reward will be with the detox you got the detox but you didn't get reward from Allah but if your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that makes it ibadah so that's why the intention, you could be doing the same, exact same act, but the intention makes the, di- the difference. The ulama say, Al-Amur bi muqasidaha. That when you have that, uh, a, uh, an action, it is related to that intention. So if you pray, and you're doing it to stretch your back, to do yoga poses or something like this, some sort of exercise, then that's all you're going to get. But if your intention is to worship Allah alone with that act of worship, then you'll be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course it must follow what? The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah azza wa jal. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd I want to get to really the main topic at hand now And I want to be as brief as possible As I know we all, many of us have to work Many of us have other things that keep us busy so I'm going to try to be very brief and give us some of the benefits that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah that they mentioned that we can gain from fasting. So that when we go into Ramadan, we go into Ramadan with basira, with ilm and fiqh, with some sort of understanding and knowing why we're fasting and some of the benefits we can gain. One of the things that the ulama they mention is that fasting, there is no ibadah like it. There is no other ibadah like it. فَعَنْ أَبِي أَمَامَ الْبَحْلِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلْعَنْهُ قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ 
مرني بأمر ينفعني الله به قال عليك بصوم فإنه لا مثل له In the hadith of Abi Umama or Abi Amama or Umama Al-Bahli radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or he said he said to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said oh messenger of Allah command me with something or tell me something that will benefit me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying upon you is fasting for verily there is nothing like it Fasting also is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's such a great form of ibadah and worship that Allah accepts that Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala from the slave. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Som li, that som is for Allah. When all the ibadah is for Allah, but som especially because it's something you can hide from the people, but you can't hide from Allah. That that ikhlas is in the heart. No one knows what you're doing. Maybe you go to the restroom and you eat some stuff, some Twinkies, some dates, whatever. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and He sees. The Prophet, uh, and Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala Allah azza wa jal. So this is a hadith of Qudsi. Kullu amal, kullu amal, kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa sawm, fa innuhu li wa ana ajzi bih. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah the Almighty said, All the deeds of the son of Adam are for him, except fasting. For verily it is for me, and I reward for it. Fasting is for Allah. So make sure your intention is pure and that you're following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. Another beautiful benefit of the fasting is that fasting is it combines the different types of patience and sabr that there is sabr fi ta'atillah there is sabr in, in being obedient to Allah because it's not easy out in these streets to be obedient to Allah all the time there's all kind of things to take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanallah and since I've come back I've only been back one week and I listen to the radio a lot, and I see, subhanAllah, they're allowing men to marry men now, and women to marry women. And this is the big debate. But in Islam, we have no debate about it. We don't even have to think twice about it. It's well known. This is something known in the religion by necessity that the people of Lut, that they will be punished. And that the Sharia even has a punishment for those people who follow that, that path. But with all these distractions, it takes patience not to get caught up in these different things that are out there. So that is sabr ala ta'atillah. That's patience and ta'atillah. And, and fasting will help you exercise that patience. Also, there is patience, sabr ala masiyatillah. There is patience in avoiding the muharrama, in avoid, avoiding those things that people invite you to. And, 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 and fasting will help you with that. Because when you're fasting, you don't have time to do that obedience. If you want your fast to be accepted. And the third type is that fasting also, or the sabr that a person has with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That knowing for sure in your heart, be certain that everything, kulli shay bi qadr Allah. That everything is by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has full knowledge of it. He, ha he has decreed it. So be satisfied with it. Sometimes we're tested with sickness. Sometimes we're tested with uh, something in our money. We're tested with all kind of things out here. But we have to be patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and fasting helps you exercise that patience. I want to mention one last, one last hadith. That is very important. فَأَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَامَرُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ مَا أَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ قَالَ الصَّوْمُ وَالْقُرْآنِ يَشْفَعَانِ لِلْعَبْدِ 
يقول صوم أي ربي إني منعته الطعام وشهوات بالنهار فشفعني فيه ويقول القرآن منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه فيشفعاني that the Quran and fasting will make will intercede for you on the day of judgment and fasting will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Lord verily I prohibited him from his food and his desires during the day please allow for me to intercede for him and then the Quran will say I prohibited him from sleeping during the night for allow for me to intercede for him and then they both will intercede but how will they intercede if you don't fast how will they intercede for you if you don't read the Quran and another benefit we gain from this hadith we see that the Quran will intercede for the person who is reading the Quran in the night meaning that the their night they're spending reciting the Quran or in Qiyamah Layl they're praying and, and, and reciting the Quran the Kitab Allah so that shows us the importance of reading the Quran at night try to read something read a page read a half a page whatever is easiest for you if you're a Talib Al-Ilm we should be reading a, a Jews or two Jews a day at least or depending on the person's ability but we should be remembering Allah much and that should be on our tongue there are so many other things I wanted to mention but we'll keep it brief but know that fasting is great and fasting will help you enter into Jannah as there is a door in Jannah called ar rayyan that is only for the people who fast will enter that door and then when the last person enters that door it will be uh, locked and no one else will be allowed in there so that shows us the greatness of fasting and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by all His divine names and attributes to accept our good and forgive our evil and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to see the holy month of Ramadan and fast the holy month of Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and the Muslims everywhere may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the Muslims everywhere and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from those people who want to cause us harm as they're doing in Iraq as they're doing in Syria as they're doing in uh, everywhere attacking the Muslims from the people of Ahl Bidah and Zandaka and the people of Kufr like the Rafa the Shia and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with with Jannah to Firdaus wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam aqimu as salat Allahu akbar Allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah hayya ala salah hayya ala falah ala qamati salah 